Hello and you're watching Jamia TV. My name is Jayashree and I'm joined today by, with Professor Nanaba Duncan, who is a professor at the Carleton University, and uh, Colin Shonk, who's with the Canadian High Commission. Um, after an enlightening session today on gender and diversity in journalism, in radio and broadcasting, we're going to catch up with Professor Nanaba and Colin. Colin, I want to start off with you. Um, Talk to me about the Canadian uh, High Commission's efforts on advocacy and making education a more diverse and inclusive space. Uh, thank, thank you, Jeshu, very much for, for having uh, uh, the High Commission and, and myself uh, this afternoon. Um, so the High Commission, uh, we uh, do a lot of advocacy work around uh, diversity and gender and inclusion, um, especially as it pertains to the, the LGBTQ plus community and uh, women's and women's empowerment. Those are priorities for Canada globally as a government and uh, here in India, that uh, the work that we, we tend to do um, is a lot around supporting the groups that are doing the work here locally in those areas. Um, uh, and helping them with their, their advocacy goals and their aims, and also doing a lot of education. Um, so we've done campaigns around gender sensitization. We worked with, with some local schools and community groups, as well as with advocacy groups on supporting, for instance, um, you know, mental health for the, the LGBTQ community. And uh, as well, we're, we're uh, quite active in the, the, the media and the freedom of expression space, and that's why we, uh, one of the reasons um, that we were able to uh, have the opportunity to work with uh, Professor Duncan because she works very closely in these two areas uh, with her background in media and also her focus on, on gender and inclusion and diversity. Thank you so much, Colin. Uh, Professor Duncan, I want to move on to you. Um, you have worked in, uh, with CBC, with the mainstream media in, in the Canadian space. Um, you run Media Girlfriends, a podcast company, and you are a teacher. You're an academic at Carleton University. That's a very busy schedule. It is. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you interact with young people a lot as a part of your work um, with young students and you inspire them. And you've also been traveling around uh, interacting with a lot of South Asian students, Indian students. What's been your experience like? I would say my experience is that I'm learning that uh, there are so many similarities and that the differences are, um, some of them are, are, are strong, but others, are, the differences are just so slight. Um, there are students who are hungry to participate in journalism. They want to, they want to be journalists and they want to practice journalism. And they're also very interested in inclusion. A lot of students here, as well as the students that I have in my classes, they're really looking to do their work in a, in a much more inclusive way. They are looking to accept their colleagues and they're looking to accept um, and engage with communities that are different from theirs in a way that is um, that is not discriminatory. They want to tell stories correctly. They want to tell stories in a way that adequately or, or, or more than adequately serves the communities that those, those stories are about. That's, a, that's very interesting. What do you think, I think, um, the step towards becoming more uh, diverse and inclusive in storytelling and journalism requires a lot of unlearning and undoing. What do you think is the first step to that? Uh, the first step is acknowledging that you have a problem. A lot of folks don't think that there is a problem. A lot of, think, a lot of folks think, oh, not diversity stuff. Like there are more important things, you know. But um, if our, if, uh, our goal in journalism is to represent society, then it should represent society. And that means that it should be reflective of all parts of that society. So if there are journalists who are coming from marginalized communities and they're entering the newsrooms, one of the first steps is to acknowledge that things have not been done uh, well, to acknowledge that we have made mistakes, and then you can start moving into intentional steps um, that I can get into later, but those intentional steps do require, uh, after you acknowledge, that you want to do something about it and that it's constant, you know. Um, being inclusive essentially means that you're not, you're not going to know everything. You're never going to know everything. But it means that you have to be ready at all times to change the way that you think. It requires so much self-awareness and Maybe some of us are not ready for it. I can say myself, I don't know everything. 
Um, but I know that I'm ready to change my mind about things that I have been taught that were not correct. If there's a, someone from a community, uh, a marginalized community that comes to me and says, you have been taught X about my people and who I am. Let me tell you what's true. I'm going to open my ears and I'm going to listen. The reason why I'm going to listen is so that when it comes time for me to report on a community, on that person's community, that I have that in mind and that I don't perpetuate stereotypes or uh, discrimination against those folks. That's that's really, you know, insightful because I'm also thinking what you said in the talk about it, telling the importance of telling stories with care. What can young journalists do to keep um, sensitivity and it's telling stories with care in mind, you know, when they are reporting, taking care of themselves and and their interviewees? Well, well you just said it there. It's a, it's, it's a lot about taking care of yourselves. One thing that journalists have, whether they are new journalists, young journalists, old journalists, is that we all have fear. And anybody who says that they don't have fear, I want to meet you. <laughs> but um, folks, if you, if you acknowledge that you have fear, then you can move into doing something uh, about it. Um, one of those steps also includes supporting the people around you. So when I say storytelling with care or interviewing with care, it means that you are acknowledging things um, with yourself. For example, if I'm going to do a story on, we talked about this um, in our talk, we talked about gender-based violence and, and intimate partner violence. Those are some interviews that I'm doing right now. And if I know that that is something that I'm getting into, I, uh, I have to be ready to acknowledge that maybe this is going to be tough for me. I have to be ready to acknowledge that, okay, that was tough, what am I going to do about it? If I'm having bad feelings or uh, negative feelings or if I'm crying or feel like I'm going to cry, then I can do that after the interview because when you cry with somebody who you're doing the interview with, then you're, 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 you're preventing the story from being about that person and you're moving, the, you're moving the attention to yourself, which is not what you want when you're doing the reporting, right? But if later on I'm having an issue and I need to go and cry or I need to go and hug somebody or if I need to eat candy for five minutes and take my mind, whatever it is that I need to do, I'm going to do it. And I'm also going to support the people around me to take care of themselves. Um, another uh, aspect about taking care means that when there's someone in the newsroom who is doing a story on a topic that affects them personally, that I am, as the editor, I'm thinking about that person, and I might just check in, and I'll give you an example. In Canada, um, there is a long-standing um, uh, acrimonious, um, uh, a, a not good relationship between Indigenous peoples in Canada and, and the government. And that is changing through uh, tr the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. However, what that means is that um, an Indigenous person who's doing stories on Indigenous issues that have to do with some very terrible things that have happened in history it means that it might be really hard for them to go out and do that story. It might be really difficult for them. And so I, as the editor, I'm going to say, first of all, um, I'm assigning this. Uh, are, you, are you good with doing this story? And that person might say, yes, this is actually very important to me. I, I really want to do this story because I want to get it right. OK, great. Um, and if you know that it's very difficult for one reason or another, when they come back, you say to them, how are you doing? I like, just want to check in. Are you good? Do you just need to take some time off? I know for a fact that one of our papers of record in, in Canada, one of the editors there, after a very um, emotional story um, about uh, the Pope and relationship between the Catholic Church and Indigenous peoples, um, one of the reporters, they gave their reporters a couple of days off after, um, uh, after doing a series of interviews, just saying, you know what, you're done for now you go ahead and just take a couple of days off. Um, someone who didn't want to take the day off, what they said was like, I still want to work. I just don't want to work on this anymore. Cool, you go work on something completely different. So the care has to be with recognizing the human who's in front of you, who is this journalist, that this person is not a robot. None of us are. But this, specifically in this case, this person is working on a story that might be very important to them. It's just recognizing that and acting accordingly.
I think those are some very valuable tips on storytelling, but also telling stories with care and sensitivity and also taking care of yourself and supporting your colleagues and having a supportive um, newsroom and a supportive work structure. Um, and lastly, I want to ask you about your transition from the mainstream media to academia. It's a very different space. What's that transition been like for you? Is it exciting? Is it frustrating? Is it scary? It's been all of that. It's been yeah. exciting and um, scary and um, delicious. And <laughs> one of the reasons why it's been delicious is because I've had an opportunity to, to meet with and engage with students like you, people who are they're at the beginning of their careers. And it's really refreshing to see the vigor that people in, in this stage of life have for the profession. It reinvigorizes, it, it, reinvig it makes me more fresh as well when it comes <laughs> to thinking about journalism and wanting to engage in journalism. And so I feel like there's an opportunity for me to make a mark in the industry in another way. And if there's a way that I can um, help students to see that everything they have to offer belongs in the industry, then I will feel like I've succeeded. And uh, I think we can end with that. Thank you so much, Professor Nanaba, for spending time with us, for sitting thank down you. with me. And thank you so much, Colin, for your time thank and you. for the Canadian High Commission support for this event. Um, this is Jeshree, and you're watching Jamia TV. Thank you.